Hi everybody, okay, welcome back. We're looking at Jeremy Duff, Elements of New Testament Greek. We're in section 6.4, in chapter 6, looking at the tenses. That is to say, we have started to introduce the additional three tenses that you hadn't looked at previously. We'd previously had the present tense, now you've got the future tense and the imperfect tense and the aorist tense. You know how to distinguish them, first and foremost, by the fact that they have an epsilon augment and or a sigma suffix, whereas the present doesn't have either. You should by now have learned that. So um, uh, if you don't know already, go away and start revising, uh, go for a walk, jump on a trampoline, whatever it is you do to ingrain things. The future tense has a sigma suffix, the imperfect tense has an epsilon augment, and the aorist tense has both an epsilon augment and a sigma suffix. Now all that remains for us to do is to learn the endings. You already know the endings for the present tense. Luon, <laughs> Luo, Luais, Lue, Luomen, Lueta, Lerusin. Luo, Luais, Lue, Luomen, Lueta, Lerusin. All we have to do now is learn the endings for the future, imperfect, and aorist tenses. And that's what we've got on the board here. Do you notice the good news? The good news in this video is that there is no future tense written here because, Lord be praised, the future tense endings for the simple verbs you're learning at the moment are exactly the same as the endings for the present tense. So if you know the present, you know the future, sigma suffix, luso, luseis, luse, lusomen, lusete, lususin. What could be easier? God be praised, you're a third of the way there already and you haven't even done any work yet. The only ones you therefore need to learn are the imperfect and the aorist. And I want to go through these with you, just highlighting what's right in front of you on page 70 of Dust Book, and also highlighting some patterns which will help you both now and also in the future to recognise different tenses. Okay, here goes. So, just show you how these tables are laid out. Elu, notice there's the stem, there's the epsilon augment, which gives it away for being an imperfect, because there's no sigma suffix is there. So if it's got an epsilon augment but no sigma suffix, it is imperfect. And the endings are here. And I've done them in two columns and one, two, three. Why have I done them like that? Because what I've been nagging you to do ever since we started doing verbs, and actually doing nouns as well, was always to try and lay things out as much as you can in the same way, because then you get used to seeing them. So now you know, without me labelling it, that this is singular, plural, first, second, third person. So I, you singular, he, she, or it, we, you plural, they. Okay, all nice and easy. And you've got that memorised, you don't have to start scribbling first, second, third, singular, plural, you've got it all in your head now because you've been laying things out in this way just like I told you to. So here are the endings for the imperfect. Eloan, Eloes, Eloen, Eloomen, Eloete, Eloan. Eloan, Eloes, Eloen, Eloomen, Eloete, Eloan. Right, some things to notice here. First up, notice, again, more good news. This and this are the same as in the present. So you're already a third of the way there with the imperfect. First plural and second plural is the same as the present and indeed the future endings. Omen and ete. Next thing to notice, the first singular and the third plural are the same on eluon. So eluon could be I was untying or they were untying. First, I, third, plural, they. How do you tell the difference in practice? Don't worry, we'll get to that. Context, context, context. And because language exists to make things clear, not to make things confusing, there will always, or pretty much always, be a contextual indication of which is which. But for now, you only need to learn one of them because it's the first, uh, beginning, and the, the first and the last one are the same. So, how do you remember that? Easy. This is imperfectly formed, isn't it? Because you can't distinguish these two at first glance. It's something that's not quite perfect about it. Okay, that doesn't, that, there's no grammatical significance to that. That's just a mnemonic to help you remember that the first one and the last one, first singular, third plural, are the same. S and N, well, notice there is a slight similarity here. S is not too dissimilar from ace. Epsilon, sigma, luo, luace, lue, on s, n. And for that matter, 
That isn't too dissimilar from the third singular of a present tense verb. Ace goes to S, A goes to N. In both cases, the iota drops out, and in this case, sometimes you get a new popping in. Those, hopefully, will help you to remember the endings for the imperfect. How, then, can you remember the endings for the aorist? Well, notice again, we've drawn them in the same way because your self-discipline and faithful obedience to your teacher has meant that you have got into the habit of going first, second, third person, singular, plural, so you don't need to label those common columns anymore. The big thing, the big, big giveaway for the aorist, alpha, 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 alpha. Aorist loves alphas. Aorist loves alphas. Easy to remember with the first singular, which is the paradigm one. It's just an alpha for the aorist to remind you that it loves alphas and it's called the aorist. That's not why it's called the aorist. Just a happy coincidence. Thank you, Lord. Helps us to remember it. Then what you notice is it's almost exactly the same as the imperfect, except all of these are turned to alphas. So all you need to learn is that it's an alpha one. If you learn the imperfect, you've got this nailed, except there's one that you don't turn to and alpha, the third singular. Just have to remember that. Maybe you could think of it that the third person singular is quite common because it's very common to say he or she did something. It's probably, I don't check this, but I bet the third person singular is the most common number and person of verb in the New Testament. Who knows? But it, or joy will ought to be, because that would make things easier. Because it's the same as the imperfect. The only way you can tell the difference with verbs like this, between the imperfect and the aorist, of course, is that the aorist doesn't just have the epsilon augment, it also has the sigma suffix. Once you've got that, you know that it's elusa, elusas, elusen, elusamen, elusata, elusam, because aorists love alphas. And the imperfect, you already know how to learn. So how should you go about doing these? Exactly the same way as you learn the present tense verb. I suggest you learn the imperfect first, and then the aorist will just pop out because it's all the alphas all the way through except in the third singular box. Yeah. So if you can get this nailed, and you're a third of the way there already because you've got that, those are the same, two for the price of one. These are a bit odd, but they're not so different from the present tense. Get that nailed, the aorist will just drop out, and by tomorrow morning you'll be ready to have a look at the next section, and we will keep moving with this chapter. Keep going, five days a week, six days a week, 20 minutes, 30 minutes a day, and we'll have you reading the New Testament in Greek in no time at all. All right, God bless and bye for now.